አዎ ሽሎም ራስ ተፈሪ ሰላምትና ጤና ይስጥ ለን ሰንበት ሰላም እንደምን ሰነበታችሁ how did you spend your shabbat your sabbath greetings in a arasi adinos tafari name i am wendem yaden otherwise known as ras adonis tafari of the line of jewish society of his imperial majesty and what we're going to touch on right now is our 51st or well, the 51st weekly torah portion of parasha that we know bamarinya in them harik as the orit or the torah minbab reading and this particular kufl this particular portion or parasha is known bamarinya as koma chukhal koma chukhal and is contained in the met of kedus of negus and negus the bible of his imperial majesty it's contained here in chapter hori zedagim the torah of the repetition miraf chapter haya zetain chapter 29 and the kutar it begins at kutar verse um 10 now bamarinya in the amharic in the bible of his imperial majesty verses 10 and 11 is connected so what we're going to do is read verse 10 and 11 in the bamarinya askadmo bamarinya and then afterwards kaza bakhala we're going to read it the english in in the english so let us begin basma wa wald wa manafas kadus ahadu amlak hulachu alek ochachu huma negado chachu huma shumagale wo chachu huma shumama to chachu huma ye isara el asawo cho hulu ale jo chachu huma se to chachu huma le seferachu huma yale nchete hin yemiya kwarita o wkha hin ma yemiya kada metatenya zare ya bamla kachu be ekezi abe herasita koma chwal amen okay now that portion begins off it begins off for us this particular weekly reading and feeding now in the hebrew let us put this up here for us we say we're going to read in english let's just put this it's the rss number 51 and it's our weekly torah portion right and in the hebrew it is known as ni a beam or some may pronounce as net a beam and the hebrew characters for it would be the ne the yod um the a the be the yod and um we write it like this the the mean and this would be ni this would be a a a a, a, a this would be a, a b sound this would be a y sound uh we we put this but actually it's a y so let's just put the y here and it's a m transliterated forward or at least in english it would be um something more or less to that right now bamarinya this would equal bamarinya the o ma che qual le coma che qual coma che qual and so uh, transliteration this would be co ma che hu wal right coma che qual coma che qual all right now min ma let to know what does this what does this give you a full view what does this what does this mean 
Now, the English, the Targum translation, the English chapter 29, verses 10 to 11. Here's what we read from His Majesty's Bible. It says, Ye stand, ye, y'all, y'all who are standing, y'all who are the ones standing. Ye stand this day, all of you, before the Lord your God. You stand before Yahweh your Eloh, or Elohim. Your captains of your tribes, your elders, and your officers, with all the men of Israel, your little ones, your wives, and thy stranger that is in thy camp, from the hewer of thy wood to the drawer of thy water. All right? Now, there's a colon here, and it continues. It continues. Let us continue, and then we'll go through an a overall summary of this Nit Abim of Verse 12 says now, that thou shouldest enter into covenant, that thou should enter into the Kal Kidan with the Lord thy God, with Amlakachu Egeziari here, with Elohim, with your Elohim Yahweh, and into his oath, which the Lord thy God maketh with thee this day. Now there's another colon here at verse 12. Let us go on till we get to the period, the full stop. Verse 13 says that he may establish thee today for a people to himself, and that he may be to thee a God that he may be to thee a God as he hath said to thee, and as he hath sworn to thy fathers, to Abraham, to Yishak, and to Yaakov, and to Yaakov. Now, that's a full stop there. So we went to verse, um, we went to verse uh, 13. So let's Bamarinya continue to verse um, um, 13 to the end of verse, beginning of verse 14, which actually in the Amharic it ends a, a paragraphical, there's a paragraphical ending right here. So we have to read um, from over here just to give you a, you can see where the paragraph, we'll, we'll explain that as we go forward. So let's deal with verse um verse uh, continued with where we left off. We left off in uh, verse uh, 12 and 13. It continues, and then below, it says, Yehowim mazare la'arusua hizbadargo yasa nesahe zend arusuma le'ante inda tenagre labato chihima labraham inna ye le yisahaka le ya'ikobima inda male amlaka yehon lehe zend amlaka he egezi abihir ka ante gar zare ya bemi yadar go wak al kidana te gabba zend inna yamlaka hinna yegezi abihir now, this is very important. This this portion that we're in is very important. So let's give a little a, a brief summary. Now, um, nitzavim, nitzabim, nitzabim is pronounced variously by various different uh, Hebrews or Jews. Um, we've given you the transliteration that based on our studies that we prefer because it is more accurate in context with the true Ethiopic root of the Ibraist or the Hebrew language. Now, nitabim, nitabim, nitabim is the Hebrew for one standing. It's the second word and it's the first distinctive word in the parasha or the kuful, this portion. It's the 51st weekly portion or parsha, Bamarinya Kufl Maletna, in the annual Jewish cycle, quote unquote, of Torah reading, or the Hebraic cycle of Torah reading. It's the eighth in the book of Deuteronomy that we know Bamarinya as Orit Ze Dagim, or the Orit, the Torah 
of the repetition. Now, it constitutes Deuteronomy chapter 29, verses 9, to Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 20. Now, Hebrews, we as Hebrews and Jews in the diaspora, so we as Philoshes of the West, we generally read this particular kufal, this orit kufal, or this Torah portion, we generally read it in September or in early October. There's something known in Judaism as the parasha nitavim, or nitavim, they may say. And it always, they say, it falls. It always occurs on the Shabbat, or the Sabbath, that it immediately, you know, that immediately is before Rosh Hashanah. Now, as we mentioned before, Rosh Hashanah for this year, 2011, occurs um, September 28th to um, September 30th. So if, if this is the 17th and we add seven days, it is not the Sabbath that it immediately precedes. That means for some Hebrews and Jews, this would actually be Ki Tavo. This would still be Ki Tavo. Now remember, we have 54 Torah portion readings. And some of the questions that we have had and others have had is, okay, how do we know which part is to be read at which particular time? And this is why we went through um, why we observe the, luni, uh, the lunar and the solar, the solar and the lunar calendar to explain scripturally the revelation, the prophecy, and some of the basic foundational elements that is very important for us to know. So for other Hebrews and Jews, therefore, if next Saturday would be the 24th, this particular sabbatical portion would be the portion that will be read the Saturday coming forward or September um September 24th, which will be the Sabbath um, coming forward. We're choosing to teach on this at this present time. So if you've already gone through this particular 51st, it is good. But in a communal way, when it would be most appropriate is preceding, is preceding the Rosh Hashanah or preceding the New Year. But now, Here's something very important that we need to understand, that Rosh Hashanah, Rosh Hashanah, does not appear in the Hebrew. And when we get into studying Rosh Hashanah, there's some interesting Wikipedia information and other information out there that's on the web that hopefully coming up in this new semester after we fulfill this fall festival season and we begin again at Barashit, you understand, or the Mejameria, when we begin from the beginning, or, or Genesis 1, in other words, begin this cycle of Luni, Solar, Torah readings, hopefully within that time period, if we have the opportunity, we'd like to prepare some additional materials. In fact, there are a couple of new books that we have already, and let us kind of show some of these. Um, these, these are the latest these are the latest books that that we have. Um, we'll go through it hopefully in their own video. This is the Lefafas Idik, you understand, or the Bandlet of, um, of of Righteousness. This particular book right here, the Bandlet of Righteousness. Um, this is Ethiopic Ethiopic Grammar. These are all um, have been um, published by the Line of Jesus Society. And in some of these books, we have um, presented a new introductory foreword. And some of these are our main books that we are going to utilize within the study. So we sought to have it printed, you understand, and published by the society. So this is Ethiopic Grammar by August Dillman. Very important, especially in the Bob Bates in the House of Reading. This right here, this is the Queen of Sheba and her only son, Minulik, this particular book also, you understand, a complete translation, a complete English translation of the famous Ethiopian work, the Kibra Negest, um, the glory of the kings of Ethiopia. And we have the goodness to this too, that we're going to publish as a companion, because there's other versions of the Kibra Negest, 
by some of these other versions of the Kibbut and the Gesh, um, are questionable, and we'll get into that. But this is the main book for our Torah studies right now that we would like, if you can, to try to get a copy of this particular book right here. This is Israel's Debt. This is called Israel's Debt to Egypt. And this is a new edition that has been published by the Society of Ismaelites, the Islam Judah Society. And it has also annotations and notes by yours truly to this new this new edition right here. Um, Israel's Debt to Egypt by Edward H. Sugden. Now, it was originally published in 1928. But if you have tried to get a copy of this, even from such a time, it was very, very difficult to get a copy. And now that we have gone through this book, and this is, a, this is one of the books, the other books are important, but this book I think is especially, especially in the new edition that we have published and that we present to you, it is very, very important for those in our Torah um, studies and our Torah portions. It's Arael's debt to Egypt. So we're going to touch on this a little bit more now. Why this is important, let's just give you a little bit from this book. It's Arael's debt to Egypt by Edward H. Sugden. Was give you, show you the cover right here and read it. Was originally published in 1928 by the Epworth Press in London and written in English. The new and revised edition, which is being published, which is published right here by the Lion of Judah Society, contains additional commentary and illustrations, along with publisher's notes by Ine Arasi Adinos Tefari. Now, the book explores the historical contacts between Egypt and Israel, especially the influence of Egypt on the religion of Israel, i.e., for example, the language, the literature, the arts, and the crafts. So this is a very important study companion. So hopefully um, for the new year and a new year of study, those who have are uh, interested in discipleship in the society, please try to get prepared in this season now for when we start out with the new um, Torah portions. This is the end of the year, but there's some very important holy days in this particular end of the year. So I wanted just to show you some of the, these are some of the new books that we have and also more books um, coming forward because education is the key. So let's put this over here and hopefully we'll get an opportunity to go into this um, a little bit more so. But as we were saying, concerning this 51st Torah portion, Nitabim, Nitabim, or, or Komachichwal, Komachichwal, Bamarinya, Nitabim, um, in the square, in, in, in rough square Hebrew. This is a square Hebrew which came uh, later on. The original form was this. This is the latter form of the Hebrew. And there's a lot of proof out there that we'll present when we touch on that particular subject matter. But the this portion usually will be read next week, the, the week coming forward. We want to address it now because there's a lot of matters that are connected right now as we, as we um, reclaim the half of our story that and our suppress our stolen legacy as we reclaim it there's there's many updates about different matters that are related and we want to do our part to at least present this as best as possible in context so this is what we're touching on this now because this is still connected with key tavo so we could continue with key tavo this particular week but we're giving ones a a, a sneak peek so to speak you understand, on what is to come and the context of it as well. Now, the Luni Solar Hebrew calendar contains up to 55 weeks. The exact number varies between 50 in common years and 54 or 55 in leap years. In some leap years, for example, 2012, 2015, 2016, 2018, 
2019, the Parasha Nit Avim or Nit Abim, this particular Torah portion, Omar Chukhwal, is read separately. In common years, for example, 2010, 2011, 2013, 2014, 2017, Parasha Nit Abim is combined with the next Parasha. So in years like this, it's combined actually with the next Parsha or the next portion that's known as Vayelech, Vayelech. And um, Balmarinya, if you look at the chart, it is known as um, Hedo, Hedo, and he went, Hedo, Vayelech, Vayelech, you understand, and he went, or Balmarinya as Hedo, or Musim Hedo, and Moshe went. So in this year, according to the the Jewish and Hebraic sense of understanding, this portion, Nitzabim, the 51st, is combined with the next Parsha, which is 52. Now, the next Parsha, the combination, the reason for it is to help to achieve the number of weekly readings needed, in other words, to complete the 54 within the cycle. To complete this, this 54. And if you look at our chart, you will see there are 54 here. And on the next page of it is the additional parasha or portions for the holy days. And we're about to come up to uh, both the Rosh Hashanah, which really should be the Yom Hat Ruah, or Ruah. The, the Ruah is the, is the trumpet, the shofar. So actually, that should be connected with the shofar. But the Jews have called it and been calling it the New Year or Rosh Hashanah and combining actually two days in, in, into one. And we'll touch on some of the details of that. But now, the two Torah portions, Nitavim and Vayelech or Vayelech, the two portions are combined except when two Sabbaths fall between Rosh Hashanah and Sukkot. So we have to look and measure, well, how many Shabbat days, when is the new moon? You understand? Remember, it's, it's lunar, as we explained in the uh, uh, earlier portion. When does the new moon come into effect? You understand? Remember, the woman, she's clothed with the sun in Revelation 12 and 1, and the moon is at her feet. So her walk, you understand, is speaking about her, 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 Akahed or Halakha, you understand, the Halakha, you understand, Halakha will basically be her walk. So our walk, you understand, as an Ethiopian, Hebrew, or Judeo-Christian people, as the elect Rastafari, is in that context, you understand, it's, it's in that context. So the two Sabbaths, see, if there's two Sabbaths, the two portions are combined with the exception of when there are two Sabbaths when there are two Sabbaths or Shabbats that fall between Rosh Hashanah and Sukkot, and neither Sabbath coincides for Holy Day. See, now, if the Sabbath coincides for Holy Day, as we've explained before, it, it is an extra special Sabbath, or it's a high Sabbath. So this is one of the, the nuances and one of the details that need to be understood. Okay, excuse I with that um, this.